Hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, welcome to uh, today's webinar. I'm joined today, our seminar. Uh, welcome. I'm joined today by Tracy Moore, who's the in international officer from uh, the University of Exeter. I'm David Thomas, speaking uh, from uh, Caretra in Mexico, from Anglo Latino Education. Um, just while students, uh, people are joining the room, we're going to play um, some videos for you to see and get a flavor of what uh, the University of Exeter is like. So let me play a video, and as people join the room, uh, we'll uh, we'll start the, the the seminar itself. Hi, I'm Jess. I'm Hi, a fourth year student studying maths at the University of Exeter. Today, I'm going to be taking you on a tour of our second campus. This is the forum, the hub, the hub of forum, campus. This is where you'll find the library, shops and cafes, and the career zone. There's also seminar rooms and a huge auditorium. This is the Ram Bar, which has been part of campus for decades and is a firm favourite. Ah, oh, the Great Hall. This is where you'll graduate. It's also a great venue for gigs and live events. Exeter even has its very own theatre. This is the university's pioneering £52.5 million Living Systems Institute. There's some world-leading scientific research going on in here. And the view from the top of the physics tower is pretty special. Come and have a look. Now, we don't want to sound too competitive, but we're pretty good at sport here. Exeter is currently the number one sports university in the south of England and Wales, and we have over 50 sports clubs to choose from. Streatham campus is full of wonderful secret spots where you can take a walk or find a little bit of peace. We've even got a campus cat, Napoleon. This is our students' union. It's a great place to hang out and study. There's a shop and food stalls too. The unique thing about Streatham campus is that it's so close to the city centre. It's a 15 minute walk, a five minute cycle, or you can even catch the bus. This is Building One, our business school. It's triple accredited, placing it amongst the world's top 1% of business schools. Up in this corner of campus are our main halls of residence. There are flats with shared kitchens, ensuite rooms and studios, which give students the opportunity to live in self-contained apartments. You can view all our rooms in virtual tours on the website. That's the end of our Stratham Campus tour. Thanks for watching. On. There we are. My video is back. My audio and video are back on. So um, that was a very nice, quick introduction to the main Exeter campus, which is an extra, the city of Exeter itself. Um, Tracy is with us now, and she can share a lot more information about Exeter, the university, and what it what awaits you in the University of Exeter. Tracy, many thanks for joining us today. I'll hand over to you. Great. Thanks, David. And like I said, thank you for this um, great opportunity to be able to speak to to students about the University of Exeter. So I'm just going to hopefully start that presentation. Hopefully you can see that. OK, so, yes. Yeah, so just to give you a bit of flavour about the, the university. So just to let you know where we are. So we're in the beautiful southwest of England. So our campuses are located in the city of Exeter in Devon and then in um, Penryn, which is in the county of Cornwall. So we are about two hours, 15 minutes from London by train, and we have a small airport at Exeter, so you can go to various places in Europe, or um, I flew to see friends in Edinburgh a few weeks ago, so a small airport, and then a larger airport at Bristol, which is just about an hour away from, from Exeter. 
So we have around 25,000 students across our three campuses and about 5,000 of those students are from outside the UK. So we have about 140 different nationalities, including about 100 students from Latin America. So it just makes for a really great mix of, of students. And this is the, the area that we live in. So like I said, just really beautiful. So we're a campus university, so we're only a 15 minute walk from the city of Exeter. So Exeter, it's a small city, but really vibrant. It's got a lot of history. It, pre it predates the Romans. Um, it's got a really great shopping centre. So you've got the, the big department stores, but you've also got lots of really cool um, independent shops as well that are really great um, and really popular with students. We've also got a lovely area by the water at the quayside. So plenty of places to eat and drink there. You can hire a canoe, you can hire a, a bike and cycle all the way to the to the beach. So um, I live here by the sea. It's um, obviously later in the evening than it is with you, you all. So, but I live right beside the seaside and it's about a 20 minute train ride from, from Exeter. Um, we also we're on the edge of Dartmoor National Park, so you might have heard of Sherlock Holmes and the Hand of the Baskervilles. So a lot of lovely countryside to go and, and walk, horse ride, hike. And then at the top of the, the picture there, you can see the Eden Project. And this is incredible. It's like a, a big tropical garden in these um, big biomes that um, are located in a crater that's about the size of about 30 football pitches. It's just amazing. And it was featured in the James Bond movie. And um, it's as well as being a tropical gardens, it's also a music venue. So we have live music play there. We also have just about an hour from us is Glastonbury, so home of the, the world famous music festival. And then, like I said, just surrounded by award winning beaches. So that is why our region is really popular with British holiday makers. So we have um, lots of these really nice seaside towns, that's St Ives and Cornwall in the bottom of the photo. Um, students are taken out to North Devon, places like Croy Bay or in Cornwall in Newquay to have a go at surfing if they fancy it. So like I said, just a really beautiful region. And then this is the campus. This is our main Exeter Streatham campus. So the first thing you see is it's really green. It's um, a registered botanic garden. So one of the most beautiful campuses in the country. And it's just like a small town. So again, plenty of places to eat and drink. It has the Northcott Theatre, which is the largest theatre in Exeter. That's on the, the campus. And that has a mix of student productions and visiting shows so students can get involved in that if they're interested. Um, we also have our great hall where you have your exams but it's also a really great music venue for, for local and, and national bands as well. Um, Exeter, we're a former sports university of the year, so you can play sport competitively, just for fun or not at all, but we do have fantastic facilities. So you can see in the photo there, um, there's some of our training pitches there. It's got our um, water-based hockey pitch there that's Olympic standard. There's some uh, indoor tennis courts and cricket centre there. So just really, really great facilities. Like I said, we're by the water, so students can go, there's a rowing club, there's a sailing club. So, but like I said, if, if sport's not your thing, there's, there's plenty of other clubs and societies for you. There's also um, a good example of some accommodation in that picture. So uh, we have uh, catered accommodation and self-catered accommodation. So for undergraduate students, if they would prefer meals um, to be provided, they can have some to, to do that. And we have Holland Hall in the bottom of our photo there. And um, they can also choose to have self-catered accommodation if they want to be a bit more independent, which is obviously available to our postgraduate students as well. And so Lafrauda is in the top of that, that photo. And accommodation is guaranteed for first year undergraduate and postgraduate international students, as long as you apply before the end of July deadline. 
And then as well as our main Exeter campus, we also have our smaller St Luke's campus. There's a lot of history at that campus. It um, houses our subjects such as sports science and we're uh, tenth in the world for sport related subjects. It's the home of our medical school is there and also our graduate school of education. And then, as I mentioned, we also have another campus in Cornwall. So it's about two hours from Exeter. So that would be about five hours from London. And it is like a living laboratory for the subjects that are taught there. You can see it's, it's on the edge of the sea. There's about four beaches on the doorstep. And it's home to our 30 million pound Environment and Sustainability Institute. So those subjects are what um, underpin the subjects that are taught there and the real ethos of that campus. And um, they really tackle some of the world's greatest challenges through the research that goes on at that campus. So subjects like um, renewable energy or zoology or marine ecology. Um, it's the home of the only UK mineral mining school as well. So just really, really great campus. Um, we've recently invested um, another £12 million pound in our science, science um, environmental and research facility there. It has a £1.2 million master's suite. It has a £4 million pound sports centre. And um, it's got a green flag like our main Exeter campus for its gardens, because, again, they're some of the most beautiful in the country. And then we really encourage that balance between your academic side of your studies and your extracurricular side. And so we have more than 250 clubs and societies. There's a Latin America, an international student society. So whatever your interest, there's going to be um, other people that are interested in, in, that, um, in those, that subject or that interest. Also, there's um, opportunities for volunteering and raising money and helping the local community. So whether you uh, climb Kilimanjaro to raise money for a big international charity or whether you go out and help local people as part of our law community clinic, doing pro bono work to help people that can't get access to legal aid. So various opportunities for you. And then at the start of your, your programme, we have what's known as Freshers Week. So you get a taste of what's available and, and see what you'd like to, to sign up for. I've already mentioned about accommodation. So like I said, it's guaranteed um, for unaccompanied international um, students as long as they apply before the end of July deadline. And for undergraduate students, if they also make us their firm choice on UCAS. On our website, there's some really great videos um, that give virtual tours of the rooms. They also show you um, how to choose your accommodation and the, the types of accommodation that are available. And like I said, the accommodation just varies depending on your, or your budget. So the rooms are typically single bedrooms. So you have your own bedroom and then um, you decide based on budget what facilities you want to share. And for postgraduate students, we have some really great studio rooms um, for, for um, postgraduate students. And then I think what I really love about Exeter, I love that it's got the mix of the history and then the investment in, in the facilities as well. So in the modern facilities. So Reed Hall at the top of the picture there, it's a really beautiful mansion house in the heart of our main um, Exeter campus. And um, each autumn we get all our students from Latin America together so you can all get to know each other um, with our Americas team and we have a traditional cream tea that's um, from our region. You have these little cakes called scones and you have cream and jam in them and then we all just get together and it's a really lovely event in the most beautiful setting. But like I said we also invest in those facilities for our students. So at the bottom of the screen is our Living Systems Institute. So that was opened a couple of years ago and it's brought together 
a group of mathematicians, scientists and researchers to pioneer research into um, the diagnosis and treatment of, of disease. So some fantastic research coming out of there. And then the building on the right is our student forum. So it was a 50 million pound investment in our student facilities. It was opened by the Queen and it has our career zone in there who uh, provide fantastic support to our students. Again, places to eat and drink. Our library is in there as well on three floors and that's open 24 hours a day. So like I said, just really great resource. Um, David, could we play maybe the the video, the Exeter Student Life video? Would that be possible? Exeter is Exeter one of those places, of those places where, where it offers so, offers so many things to so many different people. Although it's a small city, there are so many things going on. Exeter feels very historically rich. It just feels very classically British, which is so appealing to so many students, I think. You've got the beach, you've got the countryside, it's perfect. Lots of people go to Exmouth. I go to Sidma, Lime Regis, I like Salcom as well. The National Parks, Dartmoor, Exmoor. There's so many clubs and societies available for you to choose. Societies are the university's way of including everyone. Harry Potter Society and High and Seek Society. There's a large range of sports and there's the option to get involved in high performance sport and recreational sport as well. From shops to independent supermarkets, restaurants, cafes, it has everything. Princess Hay was only kind of recently refurbished, so that's got every kind of high street brand that you would ever need. There's loads of independent shops tucked away at the end of the high street. So Exeter has a variety of nice restaurants here. Whatever kind of food you're wanting, I think you can probably find it in Exeter. There is literally every type of cuisine here. Your sport choice. <laughs> There's like five main clubs and you always bump into people you know and it's just a good night basically there's always good atmosphere, good vibes. There's quite a few festivals. I went to EGB this year which is the Enchanted Garden Ball. You should definitely see a concert at the Great Hall whilst you're here. I saw Muse play here. Later that same year I took an exam on the same stage where Muse had played. I think one thing you have to do is get lost. Go down a side street, go wander around for a few hours. You'll see so much more than you actually expected to. In the city centre, there's the Royal Albert Memorial Museum, which often has visiting exhibits. The biggest theatre in Exeter is on campus. They also do student-run productions, but they also do professional productions as well. The whole campus is really, really beautiful. Beautiful architecture. It's a registered botanical garden, so it's like amazing wherever you go. It's that feeling, that's what I like so much about Exeter, that you're in a city, but you can so easily not be. The academic side and the social side. It's a perfect mix. All the students, they give you a sense of belonging. Everyone welcomes you in. I really enjoy walking on campus and being able to see people you know. I never felt as at home as I do in Exeter. Great, thank you. Thank you, David. Okay. Great, okay, so there we go. Okay, so just to tell you um, a bit about our, our um, subjects, our subject areas. So our subjects are split into six different colleges, although these are on based on the same campuses, like I said, apart from our medical school, which is on our smaller St. Luke's um, campus. And our subject areas go right through from A to Z. So from accounting right through to zoology. So some of those subjects are just on our extra campus, our main campus. So subjects such as drama, film, um, subjects such as that. Some are only offered at our Cornwall campus. So subjects such as zoology, renewable energy, that will be offered at our campus in Cornwall. But then there are also subjects that are offered at both campuses. So for undergraduate students, um, subjects such as politics, business, law, uh, they will be offered at both campuses. So you can have a look at the modules and see what best sort of matches the interest that you have and then decide which is the best, best fit for you. But for postgraduate subjects, certain subjects will only be offered at either the Exeter or the Penryn campus. 
And like I said, the, the Penryn Cornwall campus is much more sort of those sustainability and environmental subjects that are offered there. So just a quick reminder why the UK and Exeter can be a great choice for students from Latin America. So obviously our, our bachelors are just three years, so you can go straight into your major. Our master's programmes are one year in length, and then obviously our range of PhD programmes that are offered. Um, Exeter, we're top 15 in all major UK university league tables since 2011. And I think of what's fantastic is our completion rate. So 96% of our students complete their degree on time, which shows that, that students that come and study, they're, they're happy and they cope very well with our programmes. We have great employment prospects. So 95% of our graduates are in employment or further study with, um, within six months of graduating. But we're a former sports university, as I said, and we're consistently in the top 10 of the British University and College Sports Leagues. And something that's really important is that Exeter, we're a member of the prestigious Russell Group of research-led universities. So it's a small group of universities in the UK that are known for being world-class research-intensive universities. And it means that the academics that teach our students are just at the cutting edge of their field. And so they're so inspirational for our students and you get to learn from that, that vast experience that they've got. And again, it really um, is at the core of those subjects that, that we teach and the modules that are offered. Um, Exeter has gold rated teaching in the UK government stamped um, teaching excellence framework. Uh, I've mentioned about our clubs and societies and just say that uh, we're in one of the safest regions in the UK, in the southwest. Like I said, just a really popular area um, for our holiday makers as well. Just a really beautiful region. Um, also, I'll mention in shortly about our business school. And then just to say uh, that in uh, many of our programmes, we try and have opportunities for you to get that work experience so through professional placement and also field trip options that are built into those programs including our engineering business management programs international film business and our creativity innovation and business management so like i said just uh, trying to get those opportunities for you to get that valuable work experience um, I mentioned about the top 15 ranking, but just say that 24 of our subjects are in the UK top 10 in the Complete University Guide. And that's across a whole range of subjects. So um, it can be uh, subjects like drama and film. Um, it's things like politics, sociology, our business school um, it, it, um, subjects are in there. So across a whole range of programmes. And then subjects that are in the world top 50 as well, including environmental sciences and history. And like I said, 10th in the world for sport related subjects and further subjects that are in the world top 100. And then just to highlight a couple of our programmes, so um, computer and data science. So those programmes really draw on our research strengths um, across things like cybersecurity, artificial intelligence. And we also have um, special courses that have been um, designed for students that don't have um, maybe a programming background or ha have not studied computer science before. So a program like our MSc in Applied Data Science and Statistics. And we're sixth in the UK um, currently for our computer science programmes. And then engineering. So we offer a whole range of engineering programmes, but I wanted to highlight that for various um, programmes such as um, civil engineering, water engineering, structural um, materials, what you can do is combine your masters with um, modules from our business school in strategy and management. So it's a really fantastic way to add value to that programme. And then our engineering business management program. So like I said, really designed for aspiring managers and leaders. 
you can add a year's work placement onto this program so making it into a two-year program and there are only two universities in the UK that are accredited by the Institute of Engineering and Technology and Exeter is one of them for this program. And then just some examples of where alumni from the university, from our um, College of um, Engineering, Maths and Physical Sciences, the type of place that students have gone on to after graduating. And then, as I mentioned, our business school. So just to highlight that the University of Exeter Business School has triple crown accreditation and less than 100 business schools in the world have this. So we are accredited by Equis, the AACSB and the AMBA. And like I said, just that's a really prestigious um, title to have. And then various rankings for our programmes. So for our MBA, um, this year it is ranked fourth in Europe and 11th in the world in that Corporate Knights Better World um, ranking. And like, like it says there, so top 10 for our business school discipline. So really great rankings for our programmes. And I just want to see if I can play a short video for you. This might not work, but I'll, I'll give it, I'll give it a go. Let me just see. Okay. Right, let me see if this will play. 85% of jobs that will exist in 2030 haven't been invented yet. The future of work is dynamic and unpredictable. Now more than ever, future leaders need to be agile, equipped with the skills to succeed in the complex, connected and global future. Master your future with the University of Exeter Business School, a top 100 Financial Times European Business School 2017 and 2018. Whether you're seeking to launch a global career or take a completely new direction, we will help you create the future you desire in just one year. Our suite of programmes spans all areas of business and includes our flagship Financial Times ranked Finance and Management Masters. Choose to study our finance or accounting programs for an international career in a broad range of areas. From fund management and taxation to financial accounting and wealth management. Our economics programs give you the ultimate flexibility to specialise and provide the platform to launch a rewarding career across a wide range of sectors. From banking and government and beyond. Or choose your own unique pathway in business and management. Study our internationally ranked MBA or management programs or specialise with courses in entrepreneurship, marketing, human resource or tourism. Set yourself apart by studying abroad with some of the top universities around the world or gain a second qualification with leading professional associations. Enhance your employability with our dedicated careers team and access an influential alumni network of over 23,000 across the world. With close transport links to London and beyond, you have the space to grow into the leader you want to be at the University of Exeter Business School. Great, so hopefully that gave you a bit of, of a bit of a flavour about the university's um, business school. I'm just going to try and there we go. OK, and then, as it mentioned in the video, just the various accreditations that that we have um, for those programmes that are that are offered um, in our business school. And obviously having accreditation, it really counts towards your um, professional qualifications or registration with a professional body. So really, really great. And then for um, for the support with your career. So we have our career zone, as I mentioned before, and our career zone offer about 900 events every year for students. So they'll do things like look at your CV, they'll do mock job interviews with you, employers will come and um, tell you about what they're looking for, um, for from from candidates and also they'll come and do employment fairs to talk to you about opportunities that that are available 
but the business school actually has its own dedicated career service as well. So just that fantastic support that's throughout your studies, not just when you're um, coming up to graduating. And then again, it mentioned in the video, the wide range of subjects that are offered at our business school across various subject areas. And then um, just to finish my presentation, I just wanted to mention about scholarships that are available for students. So the university has announced um, recently our Global Excellence Scholarships. So these are a range of full um, £10,000 and £5,000 scholarships that are across a whole range of subjects. So you can find um, which subjects um, are eligible for this on our website, on our funding database. You can just put in the subject area of it, of, that you have of interest and your country that you live in, and then it will tell you the scholarships that are available for students from your, from your country or from your region. But as well as those, I also want to highlight the University of Exeter, the, the great scholarship that's being offered at the moment. So this is in partnership with the British Council and the Great Britain Campaign. So the University of Exeter, we're offering a £10,000 scholarship for a student from Mexico that's applying for our postgraduate taught programme in MSc management. So. Um, as that, that short video about our business school mentioned, um, the management programme, the MSc Management, it's recognised as one of the world's best programmes in the 2019 Financial Times um, Masters in Management rankings. It welcomes people from a whole range of backgrounds. So that networking that you get, networking opportunity that you get is really fantastic. You don't have to have a business background to apply for that program. Your background can be from any subject or area. So um, and it's across a whole broad range of areas. So things like entrepreneurship, um, there's um, yeah, so entrepreneurship, future trends, um, business analytics. So a whole range of, of subjects that, that it covers as part of that program. And uh, we are ranked uh, sixth in the UK for business and management. Uh, the application deadline for that scholarship is the 18th of April, and it's for um, students that are offer holders at Exeter, and you apply for it just through a simple, um, simple web form. Okay, and just to highlight that for our scholarships, um, many of them will be looking for a school that's that's around an eight out of 10 from the, from the licenciatura in Mexico. So around a, the equivalent of a UK 2-1 that they'd be looking for. Okay, so that's the end of my presentation. I hope that was helpful to give you a bit of an outline about the university. I'm obviously happy to answer any questions that you may have. Obviously, I know you're getting fantastic support from, from David and his team at Anglo-Latino Education. So, but like I said, you're, you're also, any questions that you've got, I'm obviously happy to answer them at my email or please contact David and obviously he'll be able to help you um, and contact me if, if um, I need to give any extra information. So I'm just going to stop that slide. Was that okay? It's so, is that okay? Fantastic. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah. yeah, there's um, a couple of. Um, I'll just uh, before we take any. I've not seen any questions. I've invited questions on the um, on the chat, but um, we'll move on to. I had a couple of questions based on your thing, but just to confirm um, what uh, we do, at Anglo Latino. So um, give the support through throughout the process. So uh, Tracy's given us lots of information about um, Exeter and the university and the the fantastic offer, the very broad offer the university has. So um, anybody interested in, in applying for those programs is very welcome to contact us and we will guide you all the way through the process, uh, right through to uh, scholarships and uh, the visa application. And of course, all our services are absolutely free of charge. Um, and that's really a little bit the step-by-step -step process that we see for admission. So choose your program, contact us, uh, review options. We review all documents prior to uh, submitting an application. Um, and once you have applied to university, we will follow up with the university and with your offer 
to help you with the scholarship applications, and as I mentioned, uh, the application for the visa. It's not a, as difficult or as long a process as many people think. It's relatively straightforward, and with our support, um, we hope to make it that much easier for you. Um, there's our contact details, um, study at anglolatinoedu.com, uh, our webpage, and a WhatsApp number to contact uh, for any information you require about the University of Exeter. So, uh, Tracy, it was uh, really great to have you with us today. Thank you so much. Um, I'm looking in the chat. I don't see too many questions coming in, but I had a couple based on yesterday. We had the undergraduate session that I mentioned to you um, mm. before we started this one. And um, a couple of things you said um, on today's presentation reminded me of things that were said yesterday. So you mentioned some of your master's programs allow for students to have a professional work placements as part of the masters. Um, so uh, yesterday, uh, two of the students, as I mentioned to you earlier, were actually on their professional placement year. Um, and they spoke about the process they went through to obtain that, that placement. I, I thought maybe you could expand a little bit for us on that. How does a master's student go about getting themselves a, a, a work placement as part of their, their master's degree? Yeah, that's a really, really great point. So um, as I mentioned, we have fantastic uh, career zones. So that is um, dedicated people to give you support with your career. So for our um, Masters in Management, the programme I mentioned that has the scholarship, actually one of the modules that's, that's part of that is a careers module to help you look at your future career and, and what your aspirations are and, and how you can get to that. But for the actual work placement process, like I said, our, our career zone will have lots of businesses that we've worked with before, businesses that we have relationships with and that are used to having students from us. But it will be the students themselves that will find that placement. So they will be the ones that will contact the business. So, but you will be given the skills to do that. So, you know, how to, to make a really great application letter and um, all of that side. And you'll be given the contacts to contact them. But obviously, um, it will be you that will be finding that work placement. So if you are already interested in a, in a business and you have, you've already developed your contact with them, you can just use that or use one that's provided to you from, from our team. So you have, you have the option of how to do that. But like I said, it, it will be the students that will um, contact the businesses. But we also have a really fantastic career mentor scheme. So our students can, if they want, if they want to, our postgraduate students can ask to be buddied up with um, typically a, a former student of Exeter that's working in their in their company. And they will be a mentor for you with any questions that you might have or about sort of that future career or even looking at your CV or looking at those letters. So a lot of really fantastic support for you to help mm -hmm. you get those those placements. And like I said, there's a whole variety. You could do a year's work placement as part of your undergraduate programme or as part of one of our masters in engineering business management, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. or if you want to do a short work placement or an internship, then there's mm -hmm. those opportunities to get those smaller placements as well. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously just to mention as well, David, about the, the graduate immigration route that, that should be coming in next oh, yes. summer, yes, which will yes. give students that graduate from next summer um, will be able to then ha um, apply for a two-year post-study work visa to look for and get valuable work experience in the UK. So like I said, we know how important that is for students. And so, like I said, we're really keen and we're so pleased the government is, is now hopefully pushing that forward. Absolutely. Yes. Thanks very much, Tracy. Yes, what you said very much came out on, the, on yesterday's session as well, that the students uh, were very strong in, in sharing with us that 
they did a lot of the work, but they had loads of support from the university in terms yeah. of getting their work placement, their professional placement. So, yeah, it's a it's a it's a joint a joint venture. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the student, it's like getting a real job, and that, that's the idea of the, of the placements. It's giving people that preparation to go out into the workplace and get their own their own uh, success and their own job jobs in the future. Um, we have got a question coming in from from Andrea, I can see, who's asking about scholarships, which was my next point as well. But we'll go with that, Andrea, first. Uh, does the availability, availability of scholarships depend on a student's country or only their course? Um, I think it might be both of those things or more. Uh, Tracy, can you help us? <laughs> yeah, that's a really, really great question as well. So, um, is so um, do we know? Is Andrea from from Mexico? Do we think? Do we know? I'm not sure where Andrea's from. Maybe okay. she, can, she can share that with us. But yeah, um, that would be in really general terms. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you let us know. But it's it's both. Like Zoe said, it it can be both. So for um, an undergraduate student, we are offering global excellence scholarships across a whole range of programs. So, um, so that will be based on the program. So, um, if an undergraduate student is studying IB or, um, US qualifications uh, or UK qualifications, it will be based on achieving a certain grade to get that, that global excellence scholarship, but by their course. For postgraduate students, as I mentioned, we're offering a 10,000 scholarship for um, students from Mexico um, for our MSc management programme. So that would be for Mexican nationals. So that would be based on your country. However, we also are offering a whole range of, um, of global excellence scholarships and that is by programme. So it does vary. Programmes like our MBA programme have their own scholarships um, as well, but that's again by programme. So it does vary, but we have a really great um, funding database where you can put in your, your country. Um, and it's also based on your um, the fee status. So obviously as an international student, certain scholarships like the Global Excellence Scholarships are only available for international fee-paying students. So mm -hmm. it varies. But yeah. like I said, Dave, David will be able to advise you yeah, yeah. Um, on those I just, scholarships. I just checked up on the registration. Yeah. Andrew didn't give us a clue, but she's from Peru. So um, oh, don't know if there's anything specifically for, for, for Peru, um, Tracy. So for Peru, you'd be able to apply for the Global Excellence Scholarship. So like I say, it's, it's across a range of subjects. So um, which are based on meeting typically the equivalent of our 2-1 um, um, qualification in the UK. And then it's just a really simple web form. So you just have to do a short personal statement. I think it's, it's something like a maximum of 300 or 400 words just saying um, about the, the programme and, and about the scholarship, how that will, will help you. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, um, that's very useful. Uh, uh, the other question related to the scholarships I was thinking about was as well as the internal scholarships so with the, that Exeter from the university is offering. You also have some agreements in Latin America with different funding bodies. Is that is that correct? Maybe you want to uh, mention, highlight some of those for our students who are listening to us today. Yeah, that's that's a really great point. So for any Colombian students that, that are listening, so we have an agreement with Colfaturo. So um, any master's or PhD student that is successfully uh, applies through the Colfaturo process, they will receive a 20 percent discount on their tuition fees. And we also offer a fantastic um, an AUDAR scholarship uh, for Colombian nationals. So any master's student that successfully passes the Colfaturo process um, is then eligible to be considered for our AUDAR scholarship um, provided by um, some donors at the university, and that provides a living allowance. So it's a generous living allowance around 15,000 pounds this year. So um, that's an example for, for Colombian students that's available as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Fantastic. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you. Um, don't see any more questions coming in just now. Um, 
I think that that was my questions for now as well. Obviously, we will follow up with all students and any student who needs specific advice on specific scholarships and how to get those, we help those students through that process. But I think the key thing is that uh, in most cases, including the extra ones, you need to have applied um, and to have an offer. With the extra ones, do you just have to have an application in, um, Tracy, or do you also need to have, have an offer from the university and have accepted that to apply for the Exeter scholarships? Um, you So for the postgraduate scholarship, so mm -hmm. you just need to be an, an offer holder. So you need to right. have applied and got your offer. You don't mm -hmm. have to have met all the conditions of your offer. So, okay. um, so for example, if you um, are waiting on an English test, that does not stop you being considered for our Global Excellence Scholarships. Okay. You do need to be an offer holder and then... Mm -hmm. Like I say, you apply through the simple web form, but you can okay. still meet the conditions of your offer by a, by a certain deadline. OK, you meet those later. Fantastic. Well, um, that's really useful both for the students and also for us here at Anglo Latina. So thanks so much, Tracy, for taking wow. time out on a Saturday for us. You're um, very welcome. Um, and we'll, we'll keep in touch and we'll keep in touch with uh, all the students who registered for today's session. And uh, we look forward to hearing from people. And uh, Tracy, many, many thanks and uh, take care in sunny Tynmouth down in the south of uh, <laughs> south of England. Yeah. <laughs> and th thank you to you and your team. Like I said, just a fantastic opportunity. So thank you very much. And like I said, just fantastic to work with you as always, David. Thanks very much, Tracy. All the very best and we'll, we'll be in touch. Take care and have a lovely rest of your weekend. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye for now. Bye.